for takeoff, runway 33, runway heading left and right. Ready. 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 It's happening. This is the C-17 Globemaster III, a strategic airlifter designed specifically for the U.S. Air Force. With a max payload of over 170,000 pounds, the C-17 is capable of rapid strategic airlift for troops, cargo, and supplies all over the world. But who's working behind the scenes to get these aircraft flying? Daniel Buckland, maintainer. Airlift director. I work in the Aviation Resource Management Office. I'm a C-17 loadmaster. I'm an aircrew flight equipment technician. I'm a C-17 pilot at Charleston Air Force Base. So how do all these people get a C-17 from earthbound to airborne? Sounds challenging. Let's find out. This is the daily operations meeting. Mission task teams come down the pipe and end up here where flying squadrons and flight directors meet to plan and organize the next day's missions. At 200 knots, at uh, 500 feet. We hold a daily meeting at 9.30, it's called the uh, AOD meeting. We see what squadron has the lowest amount of crews on the road. We task that squadron with the airplane to fulfill that mission. There's never a dull moment in current ops, never. But before any air crews can embark on sorties, there are a few key players that keep the C-17 mission ready. This is a very enjoyable job basically because it's very important. Um, if any of our equipment fails, it could mean, you know, it's life or death. And what we do is all the aircrew flight equipment in case of an emergency. Any type of issues with the aircraft where they have to perhaps bail out uh, with parachutes, life rafts, life preservers, oxygen masks, restraint harnesses so they're tied to the aircraft. All that gear needs to be inspected on a cycle, so that basically boils down to 85 inspections a week. Crew members do give us a lot of respect because they know that what we do, it can save their lives. Everyone inside the Armo is responsible for everything. Anything that air crew needs, we take care of. We deal with flight record folders, training folders, um, the go-no-go -no -go process to check and see if they have everything that they need before they step to get on the aircraft. We keep track to close to a thousand air crew, so it's a lot. <laughs> I like the fast pace. Uh, the job changes every day. There's you know, always something to do. From the time it lands until it takes off again, we can put anywhere between uh, 30 to 50 man hours, depending on what maintenance has to be done. Um, if it lands with bad tires, you know, we have to change tires, refueling, servicing, basically getting ready to launch again. But just to inspect it and service it, that can take about 20 to 30 man hours in itself. The uh, air crew could not take off without uh, maintenance to get them ready. The things I love the most really is just you never know where you're going to go. We do our, our pre-mission checks, our brief with each other, brief with the crew, the pilots. Maintenance has already been there for a few hours, prepping the jet, getting everything ready to go and fueled up. Life support's been out here to check out our equipment. It takes hours and hours just to get us out here. We load up the cargo, do all our free flights, and uh, if that all checks, then we get to go fly. It's a lot of work, but it all comes together here at the moment of truth. Basically, the support agencies are the backbone of what we do. Uh, for example, things like maintenance. Those guys are out there working day in and day out, making sure those jets that we fly almost 24 hours a day are ready to go. And the amount of work it takes really can't even be described. Those guys are really, really something special. To grade, it takes dozens of these professionals and hundreds of man hours to plan, prep, and execute one C 17 mission. Clear to land, runway 15, lifter 41. All these people ensure that the C 17 and her crew will return safely.